Now let's do an example of a circuit that we are asked to use mesh currents to solve, um, but this one's going to have three loops. I'm also going to put in a dependent source, just so you can see how we would handle that, and here's an independent source. So we'll let this one be 16 volts. I'll put this in a down orientation, and this will be 10 times I naught, where I naught is the current that goes through this top resistor. So suppose this top resistor has a value of 6 ohms. This one is a 4 ohm resistor. This one is an 8 ohm resistor. And this one will let be a 2 ohm resistor. OK, great. So here's our circuit. Um, step number one for the mesh current method is we want to label all inner loops. OK, so I will call this one I1. I will call this one I2. And I'll call this loop I3. Again, just to reiterate, you don't need any outer loops. You don't need any loops that are composed of um, two inner loops, because those just end up being redundant. Even though KVL tells us that the sum of voltages around any of those loops in the circuit will equal 0, we only need the inner ones for the node voltage method. I'm sorry, the mesh current method. OK, great. So once we've done step number one, step number two is we're going to write the KVL equation for each loop. OK, so that means that the sum of voltages around the loop is equal to 0. So let's see what those are. So at loop I1, if I start here in this corner, I'm going to walk around this I1 loop. The first thing I'm going to encounter is this 16 volt source. Since I'm entering through the negative terminal, I'm going to call this a negative 16 volts in my equation. Um, this is using the passive sign convention. If you want to use the opposite convention, which says that the voltage source is providing a positive voltage, and then each one of these are voltage drops, that's totally fine. You just have to remain consistent with that convention through the entire problem. So um, I first encounter the 16 volt source. I continue walking around my I1 loop. The next thing I'm going to encounter is the 4 ohm resistor. So in my equation, that'll be plus 4 times um, the current going through the 4 ohm resistor due to I1 is in this direction, and from I2 is in the opposite direction. So I1 and I2 are going to mesh at this 4 ohm resistor, and they're going to subtract since they're going in opposite directions. So this will be I1 minus I2. Which one do we know? Um, how do we know which one we minus from which? Well, we're currently walking around the I1 loop, so that means we'll have the I1 current be our positive one, and we subtract I2 from that. Great, so now we're going to continue around this loop. The next thing we're going to encounter is this 2 ohm resistor. So at the 2 ohm resistor, we have I1 going in this direction, and we have I3 going in the opposite direction. So I1 and I3 are going to mesh at the 2 ohm resistor. In my equation, that looks like 2 times the quantity I1 minus I3 because they're in opposite directions, and I'm currently doing I1, so that's going to be my positive one. Great. Um, I continue around the I1 loop until I reach the point where I started, so now I can complete my equation with an equal 0 by KVL. OK, so let me go ahead and simplify this. I'm just going to divide everything by 2 first. Negative 8 plus 2 times the quantity I1 minus I2 plus I1 minus I3 is equal to 0. Um, the reason why I'm doing all this algebra is I want to um, write this in standard form. I know since I have three loops and I have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3, I'm going to be putting this into a matrix to solve. And um, uh, that means I'm going to need this equation in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So there's an I1 term, there's an I1, and there's an I1. So these ones end up canceling out. So I have negative 8 plus I1 minus I3. So that means that um, 2, actually that's an I2. So we have 2I1 plus I1. That's a 3I1. And I've got a 2I2 minus 2I2. 
and a minus i3 is equal to zero. Great, I think our arithmetic is good here. So now um, in standard form, this is three i1 minus two i2 minus i3 is equal to positive eight. And now this equation is in standard form, so it's ready to be put into a matrix to solve. But first, we have to write our equation for the other loops. So that's the loop i1 equation. The loop i2 equation will be, if I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go around this i2 loop, the first thing I'm gonna encounter is this six ohm resistor. So this will be um, six times i2, I continue around the loop and then I hit that eight ohm resistor. So at the i2 loop, the current is going towards the left, but the I3 current is also touching this eight ohm resistor. They're going in opposite directions, so the way they're gonna mesh is they're going to subtract. So this will be eight times I2 minus I3. I continue along the direction of I2, and then I um, hit the four ohm resistor. Four ohm resistor mesh currents are I2 minus I1. And now I'm back to where I started, so I complete my equation with an equal zero. So now I can simplify this. I'll divide everything by two first. This gives me three I two plus four times I two minus I three plus two times I two minus I one. And try to do accurate arithmetic here. Minus four I three plus two I two minus two I one is equal to zero. There's an I two term here, here, and here. Um, so I've got negative two I one plus 9i2 minus 4i3 is equal to zero, and this is already in standard form, so it's ready to be plugged into my matrix when I get to that point. So next, I'm gonna do my i3 equation. So at loop i3, if I start here and I go around this I3 loop until I end where I started, first thing I'm gonna encounter is this two ohm resistor. So in my equation, this will be two times I3 minus I1, since they're going in opposite directions, plus the eight ohm resistor times I3 minus I2. And now I'm entering this dependent source through the negative terminal. So by the passive sign convention, I'm gonna call this a negative 10 I zero, and now I'm back to where I started. Now, remember at the beginning, we were told in this problem that I zero, I naught, is the current that's going through the six ohm resistor. But I labeled this upper loop I two, so actually for this I can replace I naught with I two because of my labeling scheme that I made here. So that means I'm gonna have an equation here all in terms of I1, I2, and I3, which are the variables that I wanna solve. So let me go ahead and make that substitution and I'll divide everything by two at the same time. I3 minus I1 plus four times I3 minus I2 minus five times I2 is equal to zero. Okay, great, so then if I distribute this, I get four I3 minus four I2 minus five I2. So here's my I3 terms, here are my I2 terms. So in standard form, this becomes negative I1 minus nine I2 plus five I3 is equal to zero. And now this is already in standard form. And those are my three equations and three unknowns. So now for my next step is I get to solve the system of equations. You can solve using substitution or you can use a matrix algebra and let the, um, let the matrix kind of do the work for you. I'm gonna do that because three equations and three unknowns for me gets a little bit messy because my arithmetic skills are sometimes there's greater sources for error. So the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna take my equations. Um, let me write those out for you. They were three I one minus two I two minus I three is equal to eight. And then I had negative two I two plus nine I two minus four I three is equal to zero. And then I had negative one 
negative i1 minus 9i2 plus 5i3 is equal to 0. Now I can take these equations, I'm going to take all the coefficients of these, and I'm going to put um, also my kind of answers here into this matrix, and then I'm going to row reduce, and I will get my answer. Negative 2, 9, negative 4, 0, negative 1, negative 9, 5, 0. Okay, so I just took these coefficients, um, 3, negative 2, negative 1, and then my answer, and I put those all into a matrix here. So now if I row reduce this matrix, I'm going to get a solution that's the identity matrix, and the final column will be I1, I2, and I3. So these are my answers that I want. So let me show you, um, I have a, a free online calculator that um, gives me the, does the row reduce echelon form for any matrix that I like to use. So let me do a screen share for you. Here is, it's just rrefcalculator.com. You can use MATLAB or your calculator, whatever is fine. So I'm just going to enter in my coefficients. I had 3, negative 2, and negative 1, 8. Then I had negative 2, 9, negative 4, and 0. And then I had negative 1, negative 9, 5, and 0. Now I hit RREF. And this tells me that my I1 current is approximately negative 2.57 amps. My I2 current is approximately negative 4 amps. And my I3 current is approximately negative 7.714 amps. So let me know if you have any questions for uh, using mesh currents in a circuit with three loops.